Christ is risen. Alleluia. Good morning and happy Easter to you. Welcome to this service of worship on this Easter Sunday. My name is Paul Schumacher and I am the interim priest in charge here at the Church of the Advent during this time of transition. As we meet today, we begin by remembering the Songhees and Esquimalt nations on whose traditional lands we now meet in gratitude. We acknowledge their story and their stewardship of the land and the water, the plants and the animals through the many generations. As we meet today, we remember those who have called this place their home in the recent years, the community of faith known as the Church of the Advent. Let us greet one another with words and signs of welcome. Come, come with your doubts, come with your strengths, your weaknesses, and your fears. For God loves us all and all are welcome in this space. We invite you to come with our readers, our prayer leaders, our music director and choir members, along with our technical team, and join with us as we offer prayer and praise to our Creator. Scripture shares with us, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Our opening hymn is taken from Common Praise, number 203, Jesus Christ is risen today. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And also with you. Please join with me in the spirit of this prayer. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us turn from our sinfulness, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And please join with me in the words of the calling for this Easter Sunday. Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our service now continues with the story of our faith proclaimed. Today we were going to present a very special chat with someone who lives in Scotland. Do you know where Scotland is? Scotland is a country which is part of the islands which make up the lands of England, Scotland and Ireland, also known as the United Kingdom. Scotland is a very beautiful country and the people that live there are very nice. One of them is named Helen and Helen lives in a village which has a church in it. That church is, is a part of the Church of Scotland and it's very much like the church that we belong to. Helen was going to tell us the story of the three little pigs and how they had built three houses to live in. A wolf came along and tried to blow down their houses. The first two houses were not built very strong and they blew down very quickly. The last house was made out of bricks and it was very strong. The wolf could not blow it down. So the three little pigs stayed safe within its walls. Because we were not able to copy what Helen's church had recorded as Helen was telling this story, we cannot listen to what she said. Someday, I hope that we can listen to Helen tell us the entire story, but that will have to wait for another day. Today, we need to talk about what happened on the first Easter Sunday morning. Jesus had been dead for some three days now, and he had died and was buried in a tomb which was cut out of the, out of the earth. The tomb was sealed with a very large stone which was very heavy. When Jesus' friends came to the tomb on Easter Sunday morning, they found that the stone had been rolled away and that Jesus was gone. An angel told them that Jesus was alive again. Jesus' friends were very afraid. The angel told them not to be afraid, but to be happy. Jesus had risen from the dead and was going to see his followers very soon. When they heard this, his followers ran to tell Peter and the other disciples. At first, no one would believe them, but soon the disciples began to realize that Jesus was indeed alive again but in a very different way. They were all so very happy, just like we are to be on Easter Sunday morning. And that's why we all shout, He is risen indeed! He is risen! Alleluia! So today we are to be happy and to shout for joy that Jesus is risen, because we are his chosen people. We are like the disciples, like Peter and like Mary and Salome and all the other disciples. So happy Easter, everyone. And our chat song for today is taken from More Voices, number 121. Hey now, singing, hallelujah.
The psalm for this morning is Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 14 to 24, from the Book of Alternative Services, page 866. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The strength is, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the words of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you, you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. For the word of God is scripture. For the word of God is among us. For the word of God is within us. Thanks be to God. The hymn of the day is taken from Common Praise, number 209. Walk softly in springtime. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified? He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled out from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. But this is Easter Day, the most important day of the year for Christians. So I use a different greeting. The ancient Christian Easter greeting in Greek Christos Anesti, Christ is risen, to which the person being greeted replies, Alethos Anesti, he is risen indeed. We say this in our Easter services, but at those early Easters, we know they didn't talk in modern English. In fact, English in any form didn't exist. In the Middle East, there were, and still are, many different languages. And to bridge the gap, if you wanted to do business with people of a different tongue, it was transacted in Greek. Everybody had at least a smattering of Greek. So I love to say Christos Anesti on Easter Day because it makes me feel close to those early believers. I said this is the most important day for Christians. Why? Asks St. Paul. In his first letter to the Corinthians, chapters 15, verse 17, he says, if there was no resurrection, then faith is meaningless. Everything hangs on that one fact. If he had not risen again, Jesus would just be a great teacher and healer, a wonderful man, and maybe the greatest man ever to walk this earth, but he would still be a man and only a man. If he is truly risen, then we've got a whole new situation. If he is truly risen, then he is what he said he is. And we better smarten up and pay attention, because this is the most important thing we will ever do in this life or the next. The resurrection is the central fact of the whole Christian faith. How do we know it is true? We know because we have the presence of the living Christ with us. We do not only know about Christ, but we know him. Apart from this very personal, spiritual, mystical conviction, what else do we have? Helen talked to the children about pigs. Now I'm going to mention a dog. Sherlock Holmes' story, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. 
and how that solved the case. The curious behavior was not that the watchdog barked, but that he didn't. So what has that got to do with the resurrection? We read a lot in the Gospels about what people did or said, but not so much what they didn't do or didn't say. And this has always been significant to me. Start with the body of Christ. The obvious way to discredit the claims of the disciples was to produce the body. They didn't. Not the priests, not the Romans. Matthew tells us the priests bribed the guards with a lot of money to say the disciples had stolen the body. So we know the priests didn't have it. The Romans would have probably produced it if they had it or knew its whereabouts for obvious reasons. The claims made by the disciples were either true or not. If they were not true, they were a scam, a hoax. Now every scam I ever heard of was a profit to the scammer. Money, power, whatever, the result had to be of benefit to the con artist. What benefit came to the disciples? With the exception of John, every last one of them died a martyr's death. A horrible, painful death. And that includes Paul. Leading up to those deaths were lives of poverty, deprivation, beatings, imprisonment, stonings, hunger, thirst, cold. The list goes on. I obviously wasn't paying attention before, so tell me again how any of this is profit, benefit to these people. Another problem with the con artist setup is that the story a scammer uses is a lie. Your grandson is not being held in a, in a Nigerian jail. Your credit card has not been used in Amarillo, Texas. It's a lie to benefit the perpetrator. And if there is suddenly no profit but actual physical danger, you can bet things will change pretty quickly. No scammer, even remotely in his right mind, would go willingly to a cruel death rather than deny his story. He knows it isn't worth suffering and dying for because he made the whole thing up in the first place. So if the resurrection story was cooked up by the disciples for whatever reason, would they go to their deaths for something they knew wasn't true? You don't go to torture and death for a lie you invented. Okay, maybe one of them. Poor deluded soul, but all of them? So it's what they didn't do that is as powerful as what they did do. It wasn't just the disciples and other followers who did not deny the resurrection. Their wives and families didn't either, and they surely would if they knew or suspected it wasn't true. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 5 that the apostles, including Peter, were accompanied by their wives as they preached the gospel. So we know they were supportive. What about Mary, his mother? She knew the truth, of course, because he must have spent time with her after his resurrection. It stands to reason if he went to his friends and many others, surely 
he would at the very beginning of this period have been with his mother of all people. Just the two of them alone. Mary didn't speak out and say, stop this and let the poor man rest in peace. She could have stopped him, but she didn't. With all the people involved for decades, somebody would have squealed. If this was all their idea, then there's another thing they didn't do. They didn't believe themselves that he had risen. Read Mark 16, verses 10 to 14. They didn't believe the women when they came from the tomb. They didn't believe the men who met him on the road. Jesus had told them and tried to prepare them, and they still didn't get it. See, another thing they didn't do. Jesus had to prove that he was real and not a ghost by asking for food and eating it in front of them. He rebuked them for their disbelief. If I was one of them later telling the story of that occasion, I'd be tempted to leave out the bit about Jesus rebuking me. It doesn't look good on my record. But when the disciples told the tale, they didn't leave it out. Many of you are familiar with performance appraisals. When the time comes for our final performance appraisal, it will note not only what we did, but what we didn't do. Sometimes it is good that we didn't do it, but sometimes not. We confess to sins of omission as well as commission. It is not only the bad things we didn't do, good for us. It is the good things we could have done but didn't do. Shame on us. They will all be looked at. I had a dream recently that told me of the things we, as a human race, didn't do. We didn't get it. And if my dream is anything to go by, we need to get it, and soon. Get what? the request, the instruction, the last and great commandment. In my dream, many, many people were looking through piles of letters, not the kind you get in the mail, but alphabet letters strewn all over the place. <clears throat> the people were trying to sort them into words, trying to make sense of it all, and beginning to panic because they only had so much time to put all the letters together before the game was over and time was running out. They had all the letters done, except for a very few. I was watching all this with a clear area of floor between me and the pupil. At almost the last second of the last minute, before time ran out. A man came to my side. 
He picked up the remaining letters and laid them all out before me. They spelled love one another. Think about it. Christos and Esti. Amen. On this Easter Sunday morning, we have added one more part to our service. We are going to do an anthem this morning, and the anthem is taken from The Messiah by George Frederick Handel, sung by Kathy Middleton, and it is, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Kathy will lead us in a time of prayer. How blessed is this day when earth and heaven are joined and mankind is reconciled to God. I will end each petition with holy and compassionate God. Please respond with, hear our prayers. Loving Lord, through your Son Jesus, you have forgiven us our sins. We ask that you keep reminding us what it is to be truly Christian. Remind us that we are to forgive as we are forgiven. Remind us that we are to be open to you and to each other. Help us to be heard and teach us to listen. Help us to have patience with ourselves and to have patience with each other. Holy and compassionate God, hear our prayers. O oh God, we pray this day for all who have a song they cannot sing, for all who have a burden they cannot bear, for all who wander hopeless and cannot return, for those who are sick and for those who tend them, for those who live in hunger and for those who will not share their bread, for those whose words of love are locked within their hearts, and for those who yearn to hear these, those words. We pray especially for Bill, Christopher, Diane, Sheila, Barb, Jamie, and Demas. Holy and compassionate God, hear our prayers. prayers. We pray for all who mourn loved ones, especially Lorraine, Cara, and Adam, who are left to mourn the death of Alan Turner, husband, father, and grandfather. Hold them in the warmth of your arms. They do not mourn alone. Give us the strength and courage to help them through their time of sorrow. May Alan rest in peace and raise, rise with Christ in glory. Holy and compassionate God, Hear our prayers. Eternally creative God, give us the faith and courage to recreate the world in your image. We ask this in the name of the Risen One, Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them into his grace. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now may Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now let us join together in the words of the prayer that our Savior himself taught us as we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of God our Creator, Jesus Christ our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit our Comforter. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Time for shared ministry, and it'll be very brief today. I'm going to refer you to our newsletter, which will come out on Thursday of this week, uh, which will outline anything that's happening within the parish. There will not be a midweek Bible study group this week. Uh, I'm going to take a week free of that so that uh, I have a bit of a rest following this busy time. Our commissioning hymn for today is taken from Common Praise, number 218. Rejoice, angelic choirs, rejoice. Time for our commissioning. Almighty God, grant that your holy word, which has been proclaimed this day, 
may enter our hearts through your grace and produce in us the fruit of the Spirit for witness and service in the world. To the praise and honor of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and King, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.